Ready when you are. You in the kurta, and you in flip flops, you in trainers, and you in your socks. You who is bejeweled, and you without any. You in the hijab, and you without any. You are my people, you are my plenty. Well, I can expect a uh, modern retelling of a classic. You know, um, it was done a really interesting thing. It, it shows how wonderful these old stories are, because you can still, you put them in any situation and they still ring true. Audiences can expect something really surprising, modern, politically engaged and relevant that takes an old, dusty Greek tragedy, blows the dust off it from the library and makes it into modern theatre. But I do think still it maintains what it, you know, what the story is in its classical format, which is essentially about a family. It's about a family tour. But I think what was really interesting in terms of what it was done with the transposition of this play to modern day Britain is that, I mean, it's about the state. You know, it's about the state being torn, it's about the country being torn, which yeah. I think is also really relevant and speaks to now. So, but at its heart, it's it's a really human story with lots of big things going on around it. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that's most exciting to me about this version of Antigone is that it's taking South Asian characters, British Muslim characters, and putting them into a, a story that is gnarly, complex, and about the entirety of that British and political experience. This is very much a national play and a national story. So that we can have it all together, six, seven, eight, let them be. So Mikey J is an amazing composer who's worked for years with Boy Blue and made really, really thrilling theatre and music. And Carrie Anne is the choreographer on Six. And together they have taken the idea of the chorus, which in ancient Greek tragedy is a group of people who watch stuff and comment on stuff and would have been sung and danced to some, I don't know, ancient Greek music. But in this modern reworking, it's to contemporary dance and contemporary music to really bring life to the story. Unbelievable. Unbe the Unbelievable. music and the movement in yeah. this play is extraordinary. I think what Carrie Ann and Mikey have done, it's wizardry. Like, it's, I don't even know what they're cooking up, like, what's going on, but it's wizardry. The choruses that Inua has written um, do something a little bit different to in a traditional Greek chorus. We have multiple voices, we have choruses that drive the action in some parts of the play. Um, and. Carrie and Mikey J have taken those poems, taken those choruses and given us a kind of cross-section of all of London and all of Britain. You have broken homes and full houses, no empty houses, you have full houses but no one to hold. You are my people, you are my home. I mean it couldn't come at a more uh, fortuitous time, shall we say, <laughs> with um, you know with the very genuine possibility of a a uh, leader, a prime minister of this country, the first ever prime minister of this country who might be from a South Asian heritage. And in this play, we have a South Asian heritage male prime minister. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of went, whoa, okay, that's interesting that, that happened, you know, kind of over the course of, or just as we were just about to start rehearsals, yes. um, was amazing. Um, and really but, strange. Yeah, really strange also, just like loads of sort of interesting questions that, you know, came up around it and um, questions around sort of like what that means, which is probably taking us into sort of like, I'm going off piece here when I say this, but like <laughs> interesting questions around what does it actually mean to have, you know, potentially a South Asian Prime Minister who maybe doesn't necessarily represent you, your values, what you stand for and the complexities that then come with that and how that also then you know, relates to the play because, you know, you can be South Asian and very problematic. <laughs> but then I just don't want it to be like I'm wooden, do you know what I mean? Like, but I, I need to find it, I need to find it. If, if I start doing all of that and if I start doing that, that, that. But, oh. but some people talk about that, they're like, yeah, you know, and I think it's really exciting to be doing a Greek play in a Greek amphitheatre in the park. These were plays originally written for big public festivals, so actually a festival vibe is something big, inclusive, joyful, moving, populist, and I think what we're trying to do with Inua's extraordinary adaptation is to create a political drama for our times now. 
I hope audiences connect deeply with the individual characters in our story. I also hope that it leaves them asking some of the bigger questions that the play is um, opening up for very much further thinking, feeling and discussion. Yeah, I hope they take away an evening of being part of something really big. A big, juicy, meaty, fleshy story that grabs them, takes them on a ride, entertains them, yeah. you know, with a bit of magic, but also a lot of heart, a lot of blood, a lot of tears. Um, <laughs> and lot of and yeah. they go away being thoroughly entertained and maybe inspires a bit of debate as well. would be fantastic. Yeah, basically everything that he said, I echo. That's not <laughs>